You can make sushi out of just about any fish. I mean, these days you can kind of make anything out of anything when it comes to food. I see all sorts of weird, wild creations online that are pretty cool sometimes, but other times I definitely pass. That being said, I have a very interesting food for you today. Now, it's a little bit unique because I wouldn't normally get this kind of fish for one specific reason. They're super important to the ecosystems around coral reefs. But with that said, I actually thought this would be a really good opportunity to show you this fish, talk about what it does and why it's important, and make some sushi through this process. I know it's a bit hypocritical to have one of these fish here when I talk about it, but I think it's really helpful to have what I'm actually talking about. And John Nagel, the company that provides me with all this crazy seafood, is very serious about where they source their seafood from. So without further ado, let me show you two types of parrotfish. So here's our first one. And as you can see, fish don't get much prettier than this. Both these parrotfish are stunning in their very own ways. If you look closely towards the front of the fish, you'll see a beak. That's right, parrotfish don't actually have regular teeth. They have beaks. And that's because they spend their days swimming through coral reefs and eating all the algae off. Of it. They literally spend 90% of their day every single day doing this. And it keeps the coral reefs and ecosystems extremely healthy. But heading on over to the back side of the fish, when they go to the bathroom, there's actually sand that comes out. And someone like this little guy can shit out 200 pounds of sand every single year. Now, obviously it's a simple fact that a lot of species like this are fished a lot. And in this scenario, where these particular parrotfish are from, it's not overfished. Fishing in many scenarios is a great way to keep a lot of ecosystems in check. Now, these aren't traditionally used for sushi, but you already know, today I'm gonna try it out. So let's learn how to fillet a parrotfish. To start, we're gonna come in with the knife on either side of the spine. These things have massive scales, so I have to be really careful when cutting through. Then I'll just gently slice all the way down, carefully separating the meat from the rest of the body. Now I'll do the same thing on the other side, coming all the way up and matching the cut I made on the other side. Look at how big these scales are. My knife is gonna be totally wrecked after this. Now I'll flip the fish around, find a good place to start in the bottom section, and then come all the way back towards the tail. Again, Again, I'll do the same thing on the other side. Look how pretty those fins are too. It really is a beautiful fish. Once I've done that, I'll cut downward for a second on the tail, giving a nice place for my knife to enter, and then I'll begin to cut off the first fillet using the spine as my guide. Notice how close I'm cutting to the spine. We wanna get as much meat as possible off this fish. To finish the fillet, we just need to cut right around the head. And again, with this fish, it's gonna be about finding a place for my knife to fit in. Once we've gotten that fillet off, we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. You can see not much meat left right here, and then we've gotten a very clean fillet from this fish. That is exactly what you're looking for. Now, we're almost done. Get a nice firm grip of the tail, then angle slightly downwards with your knife. Roll back and forth in order to separate the meat from the skin. Notice the very clean cut that I'm getting here. I'll keep going back and forth until I get all the way to the end, and then just let your knife glide right through. That should be the perfect separated fillet of parrotfish. Check out how cool this skin is. You can get a really good visual of how these scales work. I can compress this fish all the way to this and then spread it all the way out. And those scales do all the work. You can imagine how this comes into play when the fish is swimming really, really hard. Now that we have our filet, let's cut it into really thin strips. And now we're well on our way to making some damn good sushi. I have something pretty tricky up my sleeve today. On a small baking tray, I'm gonna lay out all my parrot fish. I'll sprinkle it with just a little bit of pink Himalayan salt, and then I'll add just a little bit of truffle oil. This is certainly a non-traditional way of making sushi, but I wanna try it out and see how it goes. And yeah, unfortunately, I got a little boo-boo today, but I'm all right. Then I'll take my culinary torch and get moving. I just want to sway slowly back and forth to really toast up the fish, making sure that I impart that flavor from the torch. Keep in mind, I don't want to overcook it. In here, I've mixed just a bit of soy sauce and Meyer lemon. I'll paint that over the top of my fish, which will just allow it to get a little bit more flavor while it sits here and I prepare the rest of my ingredients. To assemble my sushi roll, I'll start by laying down my bamboo roller. I'll follow this with a piece of nori, and then I'll add a nice little serving of my sushi rice. As you can probably tell, today I'm gonna keep the seaweed on the outside. I'll place my parrotfish down on my sushi roll, making sure to perfectly cover it all the way across. Then I'll peel back my avocado, which I've already sliced, and lay a few pieces across the center. Because for some reason, I think avocado will taste really good here, especially with what I'm about to pair it with. Pair it with was not supposed to be a joke. You get it? Pair it fish? Dad joke. Now I'll go across with a nice line of Japanese mayonnaise. You guys know Japanese mayonnaise is always my go-to, especially when it comes to sushi. And then I'll finish this with a heavy line of crispy onions. These are one of my favorite ingredients to work with in the kitchen because they 
add so much texture and flavor to anything that you put them in, whether it's a salad or a sushi roll. Now we're ready to roll it up. I'll come over firmly on the top and give a nice little press. Once that's been firmly sealed, I'll pull this back and finish it the rest of the way. And then one more seal. And voila, our perfect sushi roll. I'll spin this around to the side. Why is everything falling out? What the hell is going on? And then I'll slice it into really nice portions. Make sure you get really nice clean cuts because those crispy onions are gonna make it more difficult to cut. But I actually really like hearing that crunch as I cut through because that's something that's really unique and that you don't often hear in a sushi roll, unless it's tempura. Now let's check one of these babies out. That right there is a hella good looking sushi roll. You can see that big bunch of crispy onion off to the left, that avocado wedged right in the middle and our parrotfish off to the right. The mayonnaise has sort of spread out and the sushi Sushi rice looks great, especially considering you can tell each grain of sushi rice apart. It hasn't gotten all mushed together, which means this is nice, nice sushi rice. All right, now we're at my favorite part in every video, tasting the food. Right off the bat, this is one of those sushi rolls that you look at and just know it's gonna taste good. You know that someone put a lot of effort into making it look this sexy. So let's give this a try and listen to see if you can hear the crunch from those crispy onions. Mmm, wow. That is very unique. Now, I'll be totally honest. If you were asking me to go get sushi and you wanted to know particularly what I wanted to get, I'd probably still say toro, salmon, or tuna. Especially salmon. There's just something about that that can't be beat. But at the same time, I love trying this type of thing. That crispy onion in there is so, so good, especially paired with that avocado. And the parrotfish itself really doesn't have that much flavor. But the stuff that we've painted onto it, and also the fact that we torched it to get a little bit of that charred flavor, really changed the game with the fish itself. But I'm gonna give this sushi roll a five out of 10. It's pretty, but it's just not the sushi roll I'd pick if I was going out to eat. What I will say that I think is notable is that this is the best sushi rice we've made so far. All of those bits of rice look like individual little pearls. And sometimes with sushi, I think people forget how important the rice is. So we'll give ourselves points for that. In the meantime, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and drop a comment for what you want to see next in the Sea to Sushi series. It's lunchtime for me, so I'm going to finish these up. I'll see you next time.